Picture this, it's 2027 and the Taiwan Strait erupts with thousands of autonomous vessels moving in perfect coordination. No crew aboard, no human hesitation, just an unstoppable wave of American naval drones creating what Pentagon officials call a hellscape, a barrier so dense, so lethal, that invasion becomes mathematically impossible. This isn't some far off fantasy. Right now, in a Texas boardroom, a former Navy SEAL and his team just secured $600 million to build the most advanced autonomous shipyard in human history. They call it Port Alpha, and it's about to flip everything we know about naval warfare on its head. Today, we're diving into how Saronic Technologies plans to resurrect America's shipbuilding dominance through Port Alpha, a $2.5 billion facility that will pump out autonomous warships like Detroit once churned out Model Ts. We'll explore the cutting edge vessels already terrorizing test waters, unpack why the Navy desperately needs this capability yesterday, and reveal the controversial trade-offs that have Pentagon brass sweating bullets. Here's the brutal reality. China's shipyards can build 200 times America's naval tonnage annually. Our traditional yards are running years behind schedule, bleeding skilled workers and choking on supply chain disasters. Meanwhile, Ukraine just proved you can sink a Black Sea fleet without a single manned warship, using nothing but maritime drones that cost less than a luxury car. Enter Dino Mavrukas, former Navy SEAL turned tech CEO, who looked at this mess and said, we're going to build ships the way Silicon Valley builds software. Fast, scalable, and completely unburdened by how grandpa did it. His company, Saronic Technologies, just quadrupled its valuation to $4 billion in seven months. Investors like Andreessen Horowitz and 8VC are throwing money at them faster than they can count it. Forget everything you know about shipbuilding. Saronic's vessels are designed for autonomy from the keel up, meaning these aren't retrofitted boats with robot brains bolted on. Think of them as maritime smartphones, modular, software-defined platforms that can download new capabilities like apps. Let's start with Spyglass, their six-foot micro-predator, basically a surfboard with a PhD in naval tactics. Despite its tiny size, this little demon packs advanced sensors and a configurable payload bay for 40 pounds of equipment. With a 30 nautical mile range and 15 knot top speed, it's designed for tactical deployment in swarms, launching from beaches or larger vessels. Think of it as the reconnaissance mosquito, annoying alone, terrifying in clouds. Next up, the food chain is cutlass at 14 feet. This bad boy extends the range to 300 nautical miles at 20 knots carrying 200 pounds of havoc. Cutlass isn't just bigger, it's smarter. It deploys loitering munitions, creates adaptive command and control networks, and can identify, classify, and track surface targets autonomously. During naval exercises, multiple Cutlass vessels operated under single operator control, maintaining coordination even when communications were jammed. Then we hit Corsair, the 24-foot apex predator of the small vessel family. This beast hauls 1,000 pounds over 1,000 nautical miles at speeds exceeding 35 knots. To put that in perspective, it can sprint from Miami to Havana and back twice without refueling, carrying enough explosives to ruin anyone's day. The fuel alone weighs more than Spyglass and Cutlass combined. But wait, Saronic wasn't done. Meet Mirage, the 40-foot phantom that doubles Corsair's capabilities. We're talking 2,000 plus nautical miles range with a 2,000 pound payload capacity. This isn't just incremental improvement, it's a quantum leap. Mirage can patrol for weeks, carry sophisticated sensor suites, or deliver enough ordnance to make a destroyer nervous. Then there's Cypher, the 60-foot cryptic killer that makes everything else look like toys. Range, over 3,000 nautical miles. Payload, a staggering 10,000 pounds. That's five tons of whatever America needs delivered. Missiles, mines, sensors, or smaller drones. Cypher isn't just an unmanned vessel, it's effectively an unmanned corvette that costs a fraction of a manned ship. Finally, the monster of the fleet, Marauder. At 150 feet, this medium unmanned surface vessel, MUSV, enters warship territory. It carries 40 metric tons, that's 88,000 pounds of payload, travels 3,500 nautical miles, or loiters for over 30 days. No crew quarters needed, no life support systems, just pure, persistent lethality. Saronic acquired an entire Louisiana shipyard just to build these behemoths. Here's where it gets terrifying for adversaries. These vessels all run Saronic's unified autonomy stack. They speak the same language, share the same tactical brain, and coordinate like a single organism. Imagine a naval task force where spyglass scouts provide targeting data to cutlass platforms 
launching munitions, while Corsairs create communication networks. Mirages provide electronic warfare coverage, Cyphers deliver heavy strikes, and Marauders serve as motherships, all controlled by a handful of operators thousands of miles away. The modular architecture means each vessel can be reconfigured in hours, not months. Same hull, different mission. Monday, it's intelligence gathering. Tuesday, it's mine laying. Wednesday, it's search and rescue. The Navy can literally reshape their entire fleet composition with a manifest change and a forklift. The story begins in the Black Sea, where Ukrainian forces achieved the impossible. They effectively neutralized the Russian Black Sea fleet using nothing but jury-rigged speedboats packed with explosives. No billion-dollar destroyers. No nuclear submarines. Just cheap, fast, unmanned vessels that turned Sevastopol into a maritime graveyard. This caught the Pentagon's attention like a thunderbolt. In August 2023, Deputy Defense Secretary Kathleen Hicks unveiled the Replicator Initiative, a crash program to field multiple thousands of autonomous systems within 24 months. The goal? Counter China's numerical advantage through what she calls affordable mass. Enter Saronic Technologies, founded in September 2022 by Mavrukas and his team of former SpaceX, Anduril, and Palantir engineers. These weren't your typical defense contractors who spent a decade on PowerPoints before cutting metal. Within four months, they had their first design. By June 2023, just nine months after founding, they had boats in the water. By August 2023, Saronic vessels were participating in Navy exercises, operating in coordinated swarms, tracking targets at night, and integrating with Andrew's Lattice Command System. The Navy brass watching from the shore had one reaction. How fast can you make more? The money followed the momentum. $55 million seed, round in October 2023. Another $175 million by July 2024, hitting unicorn status. Then February 2025 brought the mother load, $600 million, led by tech investor Alad Gill, quadrupling their valuation overnight. Joe Lonsdale from 8VC, who backed Andrew from day one, called Saronic's culture exceptionally intense, Silicon Valley's highest compliment. But Mavrukas wasn't content with small boats. In 2024, Saronic acquired Gulfcraft's Louisiana shipyard, giving them immediate production capacity for medium unmanned surface vessels. They unveiled Marauder, a 150-foot behemoth that can carry 40 metric tons, travel 3,500 nautical miles, or loiter for over 30 days. No crew required, ever. Let's talk about how these vessels would actually fight. Picture the Taiwan Strait, 110 miles of contested water that could determine the balance of power for the next century. In the Pentagon's nightmare scenario, China launches an invasion fleet toward Taiwan. Traditional response? Send carrier strike groups into harm's way, risking thousands of American lives and trillion dollar assets. Port Alpha changes the equation entirely. Within hours, hundreds of vessels launch from dispersed locations, some from allied ports, others from converted commercial ships, even from submarines. The small spyglass units flood the zone first, creating a sensor net. Cutlass platforms follow, establishing communication relays. Then come the Corsairs, Mirages, and Cyphers in waves, while Marauders lurk offshore as command nodes and arsenal ships. Here's a hypothetical engagement. Chinese amphibious assault ships approach Taiwan's shores. Suddenly, their radar lights up with hundreds of contacts. The six-foot spyglass vessels are providing real-time targeting data while being nearly impossible to hit. Cutlass platforms sprint forward launching switchblade loitering munitions. Corsairs execute high-speed flanking maneuvers at 35 knots. The Mirages? They're jamming communications and creating false radar signatures. Cypher vessels close to deliver their 10,000-pound payloads, perhaps naval mines, torpedoes, or anti-ship missiles. Meanwhile, a single Marauder coordinates the entire ballet from 50 miles away. It's 30-day endurance, meaning it can maintain this chaos indefinitely. This isn't fantasy. It's being tested right now. During Integrated Battle Problem 24.1, Saronic vessels successfully demonstrated nighttime intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance operations. Multiple vessels operated under single operator control, maintaining coordination through redundant communication pathways, even in contested electromagnetic environments. The real game changer is production speed. Port Alpha will incorporate manufacturing techniques from the automotive and aerospace industries, Think Tesla's Gigafactory meets Newport News shipbuilding. Mavrukas promises production at a speed and scale not seen since World War II. 
We're talking about vessels rolling off assembly lines in days, not years. Where will this revolution happen? Saronic is currently evaluating sites across the Gulf Coast, with Texas leading the pack. They need deep water access, proximity to suppliers, and a workforce ready to embrace radical automation. Local governments are reportedly offering massive incentive packages. Whoever lands Port Alpha gets to host the future of American naval power. But here's where things get messy. Traditional shipbuilders are crying foul, arguing that Port Alpha will cannibalize the already struggling workforce. Critics point out the grim irony. We're solving our shipyard worker shortage by building ships that don't need crews. The elephant in the room? Cybersecurity. Every autonomous vessel is essentially a floating computer, and we all know how secure those are. Imagine a Chinese hacker turning our own drone swarm against us. The Navy insists they have robust cyber defenses, but remember, they said the same thing before the OPM breach exposed 22 million security clearances. Then, there's the legal minefield. International maritime law assumes human decision-makers. Who's liable when an autonomous vessel misidentifies a civilian yacht as hostile? The laws of armed conflict require human judgment for lethal force, but at swarm scale, is meaningful human control even possible? The money question looms large too. Yes, $2.5 billion sounds like a bargain compared to a $13 billion Ford-class carrier, but that's just the facility. Add in development costs, maintenance, training, and the inevitable overruns, and suddenly we're talking real money. Congress members are already asking pointed questions about return on investment. Our allies are watching nervously. Some, like Australia and Japan, are eager partners. Others worry about an autonomous arms race that makes the seas more dangerous for everyone. There's already talk of an underwater Geneva Convention to regulate these systems before they proliferate beyond control. Yet perhaps the biggest challenge is cultural. The Navy has 250 years of tradition wrapped up in manned vessels. Asking admirals to trust their battle plans to robot boats is like asking cavalry officers to embrace the tank. Sure, it's obviously the future, but that doesn't make the transition painless. Some senior officers privately call the unmanned push soulless and worry about losing the human element that's defined naval service since John Paul Jones. But then again, they probably said the same thing about ironclads replacing wooden ships. So here's the bottom line, delivered with all the subtlety of a torpedo. Port Alpha represents nothing less than America's last best shot at maintaining naval supremacy in the Pacific. Saronic Technologies has assembled the money, the mines, and the momentum to revolutionize maritime warfare in the span of a single presidential term. Let's recap the game-changing takeaways. First, Saronic's six-vessel family, from the six-foot spyglass to the 150-foot marauder, creates a layered, autonomous capability that scales from reconnaissance to heavy strike. Second, Port Alpha will manufacture at scales that make traditional shipyards look like artisan workshops, potentially producing hundreds of vessels annually. Third, the Replicator Initiative has Pentagon backing in billion-dollar budgets, making this transformation inevitable, not speculative. Fourth, the timeline is aggressive. Port Alpha goes operational within five years, with the first replicator capabilities hitting the fleet this August. The strategic implications ripple far beyond the Taiwan Strait. We're witnessing the democratization of naval power. Small nations could theoretically field swarms that challenge traditional fleets. Non-state actors might acquire similar capabilities. The entire concept of sea control gets redefined when the ocean is populated by thousands of intelligent, autonomous vessels. What comes next? Saronic's vessel family is complete from 6 feet to 150 feet, but the technology keeps evolving. The Mirage and Cypher platforms just announced this year show Saronic's ambition to bridge the gap between small craft and proper warships. With Cypher's 10,000-pound payload and 3,000-mile range, we're not talking about boats anymore. These are unmanned destroyers in everything but name. The Marauder, with its month-long endurance and 40-ton capacity, could theoretically carry enough missiles to sink an entire task force. By the time Port Alpha opens, we might see vessels that blur the line between surface combatant and autonomous weapon system entirely. Which brings us to the question that should keep every strategic planner awake at night. In a world where a former SEAL with Silicon Valley backing can revolutionize naval warfare in three years, where a $4 billion investment could neutralize a trillion dollar fleet, and where the battlefield is dominated by expendable robots instead of irreplaceable humans, are we witnessing the dawn of a safer, more stable maritime order? Or are we opening Pandora's box on the high seas? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Are autonomous naval swarms America's secret weapon or a strategic miscalculation? Should we be accelerating Port Alpha or pumping the brakes on the robot revolution? 
And here's one for the naval history buffs. Which military innovation does this most remind you of? The aircraft carrier replacing battleships or the submarine changing underwater warfare forever?